work that day. And my mother-in-law called me and said that my wife and son and their granddaddy and grandmother had been shot. Or been, she said it had been killed. And it just, I fell down at work. My co-workers asked me what was going on. And I had to muster enough strength to tell them what had happened. And I just begged for it not to be true. To know that my wife and son had been shot. In cold blood, basically. And to know that I'll never have them here with me. To hold. To tell them I love them. And just have them here. That's just... It's a pain somebody, nobody should feel. Every moment I had with them was cherished. Every moment. It didn't matter what I was doing. As long as I was with them. Tuesday's violence marks the single deadliest crime in recorded Alabama history. We have examined multiple crime scenes spread over two counties and more than 20 miles. Because the author of these events died Tuesday by his own hands, the evidence in this case becomes the ultimate witness. He owned several different types of firearms, including two assault rifles. McClendon made a large purchase of ammunition and magazines the day before the homicides. McClendon left a letter that is now in the possession of investigators describing how he killed his mother and his intentions of taking his own life. The letter describes how McClendon harbored ill feelings toward family members due to a family dispute. Our investigators are absolutely convinced that these events began with Michael Kenneth McClendon and died with Michael Kenneth McClendon. There are no indications that there are any lingering threats to the community that stem from this incident. Nobody here would have ever expected that of him. I don't believe there's one person in town that would, if you had it asked a week ago and said, you know, do you think this kid's capable of something like that, would have said, yeah. I, I just don't believe that. Let's go. We'll take care of the rest of it. Look at you sleeping. Thank you.